for me. <laughs> I was not expecting that much people on a Sunday afternoon with such a shitty weather outside, but I mean, probably how, how, how much of you are really interested in the talk or just sitting here because it's, sco it's warmer inside or drinking beer? That's a good reason. I mean, <laughs> you have my vote on that. I mean, yeah, that's a good reason. So um, yeah, let's talk a bit about the central infrastructure and uh, the joy of running on community donated hardware. I will explain what, why I choose that, that uh, topic. So just a quick survey. Who is using already CentOS here in the room? Okay, job done. <laughs> so um, who is more sysadmin and developer? Sysadmin first. Cool, and developers, the rest. Okay, cool. So first thing. Who am I? That's a good question. I'm a, lo I'm a local guy, I'm a Belgian guy. You saw that with a picture of a Belgian beer anyway. That was easy to guess. I'm, that also explains why I love Belgian beer, but I have also that strange uh, accent when I try to speak English. So, well, don't beer. I'm a citizen by choice, meaning that I really enjoy what I do. Uh, I'm not a developer at all. I had no uh, coding experience, even if those days it turned to be infrastructure as a service. And, co and infrastructure by code. So we have two. I'm a CentOS um, user for a long time, uh, I would say even abuser, just to the number, due to the fact that I've installed and reinstalled quite a bunch of machines running CentOS, and I'm also a project member. So we'll cover a little bit of history. So you probably saw the nice shirt, the nice 10 years old shirt that we have for the project. If you didn't get your shirt already, come to the K building, we have a booth, and we have a bunch, and I mean, I really need to take care uh, to, be, to get rid of all those t-shirts because otherwise I will take those back home and I don't want that or my wife will kill me. So please feel free to, to ask a t-shirt at the booth. They are free. We'll cover um, the um, infrastructure on the overview. And also, I think that we have people from other distribution. I wanted the talk to, to turn into a discussion with other people from distribution. I know that some, we have some federal guys there. Um, I think I was there was supposed to be a guy from OpenSUSE as, as well. Is there, fine. And Debian, no? Okay, cool. So at the end of the talk, let's discuss about, for example, the problem that we probably all have in common and how we try to solve it. We can learn for, from each other. So yeah, once upon a time, um, CentOS at all, um, in 2003, well, for the domain creation, but uh, historically, the real infrastructure started in 2004 when we had the first release of the CentOS project. Of, your, of course, at the time, if you remember, I'm, I don't, uh, don't know how much people were using CentOS 3.3, which was the first release ever. One, two guys, yeah, obviously me, I was there as well. So that was just a bunch of people doing that on those spare time for academic purposes only. It was just for fun, let's try to understand how to rebuild source or PM in a correct way and put all that together into, the diff into a distribution that is, well, a rel rebuild. So that was, well, some machine just being in a basement or in the garage, whatever, just uh, being used to rebuild a bunch of source or PM. And uh, yeah, I think that at that time we had something like five donated machines, so companies interesting in supporting us and those five machines were just doing all the world at the same time. I remember it was a nightmare because one of the machines sitting in the US was at the same time the web server, the forum server, the master server for Mirror. Well, all the things you don't want on the same server, believe me, especially when it starts to become successful. So, yeah. So how did we manage that 10 years ago? Wow, 10 years ago, configuration management was not the big thing on the new kids on the block. Everybody was searching for solution, and uh, it was mainly a, a bunch of local scripts that were just um, used to manage those machines when it started to grow, uh, and I will cover that later, the, the current infrastructure that we have. And uh, yes, the, the, it was mainly maximum 10 people working on the CentOS pro project at that time, and I think that we just now reached 11. Wow, interesting. So, um, we were just doing that on our free time, meaning that we had day job. And we didn't want to, to spend too much time on things that could be automated. So that's how we started to invest time into automation. 
And yeah, we started to use Puppet since almost the beginning. The first version I was using myself inside of uh, the CentOS project was Puppet 0 0.23. I don't know who has used uh, Puppet 2.23, 0 0.23 here. Not that much. I mean, for the, for, for just for the, the history, in 2007, in the CentOS dev room, we had Luke Kenny just trying to explain to people that Puppet Labs was the way to go. Well, just compare uh, the, the situation of Puppet Labs those days. So the current infrastructure is that obviously we are eating on our dog food. So we have a bunch of, a mix of CentOS 5, yes, still in production, but still supported. That's a pros and cons of an enterprise distribution. Uh, we still have five uh, CentOS 5 nodes uh, running critical, um, mission critical application for, for you, your group. Six, and we started to roll seven in the current infrastructure. So um, the reason why, well, it, it's a slow migration because we need to remotely reinstall all those, mach those machines. We run exclusively on the native machine and we don't have always full control of the machine. So we have to reinstall the machines and um, yeah, basically to just get rid of the previous version. We have machine at the moment still being used and they are the same machines that were donated to the project 10 years ago. Yeah, we still have machine running Pentium 4 with one gig of RAM. That's what we have at the moment. Not everywhere, so we have a mix of sorts of old and new machines, but we still have to take care of those old machines. And um, before the cloud was the, the new kid on the block and was really the hype and buzzword, we had to consider for the CentOS infrastructure, everything as being ephemeral because we accepted the donated machines without any SLA without any guarantee, we have nothing in the same data center. I mean, I think that we have one location where we have two machines in the, in the same data center. So not possible to do a cluster on, with a machine sitting in Malaysia and the other one in Brazil, which is the situation that we have now. So that was, that was an interesting challenge to try to solve. So as I said, we need, w there was a need to automate as much as possible, including r installation of the operating system, obviously, but also configure those machines where, when they were running. So yeah, we migrate multiple times from Puppet to Puppet, and actually we migrate everything to Puppet 3.6. something. Well, we need to upgrade as well, but at the moment, that means that we are running Puppet Master D4 uh, CentOS on CentOS 6, managing the CentOS 6 and 7 node with Puppet 3.6, and the Puppet, uh, Still Puppet Agent 2.7 on CentOS 5 node. Do you know why we can't migrate uh, to Puppet 3 on CentOS 5? Sorry? What, Python? For, for, for Ruby. Ruby, yes, that's exactly the point. So um, the, the version that you need to run Puppet 3. something is uh, higher than the one in the distribution, meaning that that's also a challenge when you want to run an enterprise distribution Sometimes the tools that you use don't care too much about that. So, well, that you have to jangle with all those things. But at the moment, it's still working. Puppet Master D3 does something, can compile a catalog and can apply that on a, well, the agent can apply that uh, without any problem. So the thing we've done, we, we've done in the past was, well, Puppet 0 0.23 was quite limited. So we decided to use something else, obviously. And at the time, it, it was a bunch of, of things just in the same, so we used the version at the time, which migrated to Git <laughs> now. But uh, we wanted to use something more sexy on top of, so we wanted to separate basically all the modules, the Puppet modules from all the data, all the variables that were specific to group of nodes or just nodes. So you have multiple solutions to do that. Um, one of the solutions is to use Foreman. We try to use Foreman both as a Puppet dashboard for the reporting feature and uh, also as a, an external lambda classifier. So we put all the things into Foreman. All the group are, are there, the config group, uh, the dependencies, everything is there, so it's really easy. And Foreman is an also a good API that you can use to interact. Uh, I will not cover that in detail because it's not a Foreman pitch, but it's really a good product to use. Uh, for the monitoring, um, we tested a bunch of solution in the past and Two of us in the CentOS infrastructure team were using Zabbix for our daily job. 
So we knew Zabbix quite well. And it works per perfectly fine for the kind of simple infrastructure that we have at the moment. So basically we have agent on all nodes and we have some external check. So basic thing that you do. The only thing that we were, it was really interesting to have is Zabbix proxies. Because if, for example, you have your monitoring server that is sitting somewhere in the US and that you have to monitor some machines in Australia, you can have, have big, big latencies. So the more proxies you can have to just um, uh, unload a massive server for monitoring task, the better it is. DNS, nothing fancy, uh, nothing special. Well, at first, at first uh, sight. Bind is obviously what we use because it's in the distro, it's stable, secure, everything. But um, we had a special need to delegate something to other DNS server. Why? We use PowerDNS for that, which is not in the distribution, but it's a package really easy to, to compile. It's available in the EPL um, repository as well. So why did we decide to use PowerDNS? The interesting problem that we have within CentOS is that when we have millions of machines coming through the mirror network at the same time, what can we do? Well, we try to say that we want to you to be redirected to the nearest mirror, meaning one of the mirror in your country, if you have one, if not a nearby country, and if not possible, at least a mirror in the continent. If you had no mirror on the continent, that's, that basically means that you don't exist, so we don't care. So um, for that, we needed spe a specific um, plugin, and uh, we decided to use GeoIP. So Bind at the time, was not it, was, it was not possible to have uh, some kind of access control list and redirection and specific. You can do that with Vue in Bind, if you know Bind, but you had to do everything from scratch. So we decided just to use PowerDNS for that. And um, we just redirected. Uh, we, we, we have two kinds of, re of requests, so I will speak about the msync node, what we call internally the msync node, which are basically the mirror machines, but also the ersync target that we use so that external people can ersync the complete uh, CentOS tree from when they want to become an external public mirror. Same thing for them, we just redirected them to the nearest mirror, and we don't want, for example, someone from America sitting on a 10 gigabit link being connected to, for example, a machine in Malaysia connected at 10 megabits, which is the case. We have some machines, for example, connected sometimes at 10 megabits. At the moment, PowerDNS is really simple. I mean, we like the KISS principle. Keep it stupid and simple. The PowerDNS thing is just a custom backend. At the moment, it runs on very old machines, but is able to handle something like 400 requests request per second, which is nothing. I mean, from a DNS point of view, that's really nothing. At the same time, it's interesting because normally, as an end user, we are not supposed to even do that kind of query. I will cover that in when I will speak about the mirrorless thing, which is quite different. When you run a YAM update, you see that you have fastest mirror and you are direct to, an, to a list of external mirror and not one from mirror.centos.org. So yes, obviously, like every project, every distribution, we have other nodes like covering um, web services, the, um, the forums, bug tracker, mailing list, torrent tracker, uh, and CEDAR. So yeah, that's that's really basic thing. So let's cover, for example, one of the, 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 the role. That's probably one crucial role, I mean, for you, end user. It's the msync um, role. We have, at the moment, um, 60 donated machines running uh, CentOS, and that their main role is only to fetch new releases, security updates, and push them as fast as, pe as possible to the other node. So what we do is that, from the build system point of view, we have two master, uh, two master nodes that are in separate data center that we know for sure we can trust. We don't want those machines to disappear. Um, pushing to, um, let's call those ring zero and ring one, some machines at decent connected at decent speed. We push to those machines, and directly after, we just push to level two, ring two machines. When it's done, it's available to, at the moment, we have more than 580 external mirror fetching all the, the updates from us. So that's um, meaning that from a statistics, when we have a new release, 
when we aggregate, it, uh, when we do an aggregation on all the statistics from those mirror, from the mirror that we, con we control, not the one that you are fetching updates from, we are pushing um, during several hours at more than four gigabits per second. So all that on run it uh, on donated machine. The current stages is that we have a lot of machine in the US. Um, CentOS at the beginning was really strong and has a strong presence in the US, meaning that a lot of people from um, hosting industry and company were interested to have a lot of mirror there and said, well, we have thousands of servers, so we can give you one access. So please um, reinstall it, do whatever you want with it. We have a few in Europe. We could do with better machine and more machines. And the problem is more in Africa or in Asia. That's really where we have problem. I'm guessing that it's the same thing for other distribution as well, because yeah, lack of resource. We have only one machine, for example, for Africa, which is in, the in South Africa. So that's, that's really difficult to, to solve at the moment. And yeah, sometimes I said that even in 2015, we have machine connected only at 10 megabits per second, which is wow. If you consider for probably the, the connection that you have at home, you have better, uh, better connectivity than that, and it's a server in a data center. So why do we, we, do we want to keep that? I want your opinion. Why, for example, center is still interested in machine connected at 10 megabits per second? What would be the good reason for that? Yeah, good point. Thank you. So sometimes you have country that are peering problems. I mean, they have really international connectivity that are really um, thin. <coughs> so it takes more time, for example, to push update to a machine in Malaysia connected at 10 megabits. But internally in the country, they have better connectivity, meaning that, yeah, it's, slow it's slower to get updates to that machine first, but when it's there, it's faster for all the consumer there. We don't care about the fact that they just, um, they don't use machine externally, they use that machine because they are geo IP where they are for directed to that machine. So that's better for, for, for the, the user as well. So what we do is, I told you about the msync role, so the, 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 the mirror.mythos.org role. Normally when you install a machine and you, you run YAM updates, we, you are not supposed to hit that mirror.mythos.org uh, let's, let's call it CDN. Because we have more than 580 external mirror at the moment. So you're supposed to hit one of the, the country you are in, you, you, from, from which you are um, um, using the YAMAPDIT command from. So what we have is that we have a mirror status um, machine that's checked in loop. There is, it's just do that in loop. It verify those 500 mirror in the loop time. It just verify every repository, every release and every architecture. It even check the, the ISO of the, the, the checksum of the ISO file so that when, for example, you want to download, you are sure that it's validated. So if you have a look from, from time to time on centos.org slash download, you'll see that every five minutes it's refreshed with validated mirror, machine appear, other disappear. So <coughs> it's done in loop. Um, for for the people interested in, you, in um, knowing how it works, we just generate a list of validated mirror for a specific repository. So if, for example, you, you use that simple curl request, that's exactly what YAM is doing. It's just checking, say, mirror list, tell me the, 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 the give me a list of mirrors that are validated for my actual release, and that's it in, the, in your country. And we use the same process when you want to download an ISO image. If you want to download the ISO image from the website, it will just use the isoredirect.centos.org web service, which just gives you back a list of validated mirror in your country or the nearby country. Yes, question. Do you have a preference for the mirror in your country? What? No, that's just uh, for example. I mean, if for debugging purposes in the, the script we are using in the back end, um, I'm forcing that to, to be, well, B because I'm Belgian. So you can override it? Not, not on by um, no. Um, yeah, we'll use the MaxMine, well, the mirrorless uh, server will use MaxMine uh, to guess from your IP, supposing that it's good, because for sometimes we had users complaining that, hey, MaxMine thinks that I'm in, uh, in Ireland, but in fact, I'm, I'm in the UK. So um, sometimes, well, we have no direct, we can say, tell MaxMine that there's something wrong, they have to update the, the database, but, or you can, as a user, for example. 
but it's dynamically done. So so back to the donated machine challenge. As I said, well, all the machines that we are using are donated machines, but well, in a perfect world, that would be fine. Except that after 10 years, I can tell you that we, we have sometimes trouble in the sense that we, we, we have lost, for example, I, we, I don't even count the number of machines that we have lost over the 10 years. And for various reasons. Sometimes, um, well, there is an hardware issue that can be solved. That's, that's, that's not a problem. But sometimes it's something else, and I will cover that in the next slide. So, for example, we had to, um, we, we've lost, even just for 2014, we've lost several msync nodes, so mirror.centos.org, uh, and mirror the centers of old nodes. We had to migrate, for example, the main wiki three times during, I mean, in the, the last two months, I had to migrate the wiki services three times. Because, yeah, it's not possible to, to show them in advance uh, what happened on those, on those donated machines. Well, if it's a missing node, well, we have plenty of. When it's the main uh, glue record that you have to migrate, well, you hope the best and you hope that those, those people will tell you in advance, otherwise you are screwed. And uh, that's one of the risks we have sometimes. So we try to obviously um, try we, um, to migrate that to a um, company, to a machine that we trust for a long time, that we know that for sure that they will stay. Same thing for the, the, just the, the, the services that I had to migrate just in 2014. The mailing list, the bug tracker, the planet don't set the all. The mirror mon, the mirror status node, the, 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 the crawler that's just verify all the mirror I had to migrate. So, well, that's, you have to use autom automation, otherwise, well, it's game over. So, back to the change of donated machines. Sometimes they don't even tell you that uh, they don't want to sponsor you anymore. So, you had a contact, for example, back in 2005 from Mr. B at Company C, say, well, I, I really like what you do. I want to give you an access to a machine sitting in my data center. Fine. But what, ap what appeared to that company over the years? Sometimes bankruptcy. And you just discover that when Zabbix suddenly said, well, your machine doesn't seem to be uh, responding anymore. And you try to contact the, the, the guy or the, poc the point of contact you had, and nobody's answering. The email is bounced back. Or worse, you see that the domain doesn't exist anymore. And then start the trouble. Other thing that we had also is that I, saw, I said, Mr. B from Company C told you that, well, you, can, you could use a machine, no problem. But Company C has been acquired by Company B and sometimes by Company A. But Company A doesn't care about open source. So suddenly they said, we don't want to sponsor you anymore. I mean, well, it's not the business model, so we don't want you to use the bandwidth. So bye bye. In the worst case, they don't even, in, in the best case, they send you a mail. In the worst case, you just discover that through the monitoring system, which is also bad. Somewhere in between, we had some interesting situation when we discovered that, for example, the company was not existing anymore, was acquired by another one, but we still have access to the machine, it still runs. We have no contact, nothing, no detail, when we try to reach, I said, no, no, the, your machine doesn't run in our data center, but it still does. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, it's then a chicken and egg problem. What you can do? Can you still use it or not? I mean, mm. so, and yeah, sometimes they just completely disappear and, and you don't know. So when, for example, a company said, we want to help you. We want to provide you access to machine. The first thing we do is that, yeah, we say thank you, obviously. And um, the first question is, which kind of distribution do you want on that? I mean, do you, do, re do you really expect me to answer Windows? I mean, <laughs> let's be honest. So, um, yeah, obviously, let's, uh, let's, let's give you access to the machine with SSH or just send, you, uh, just send, chance, just send me my uh, public key that I can use to inject. But what we do is every time we just reinstall the machine. I mean. Do you trust someone giving you access to a machine? Believe me, I've seen strange things in my life. Like hosting companies, they said, well, you have a dedicated server, 
the first thing you do when you log in, you see, well, I will probably do a complete audit on the machines, and you see that they inject their own keys directly into root authorized key. Come on, no, please. Or they are using different kernel, or they overwrite base package. I mean, that's their choice, no problem. I don't want, uh, I will not mention OVH, oh, I did, sorry. With the fact that, for example, when you say, well, give me a CentOS machine, it's not. They are just using a completely different kernel. They disable everything, like SLNX is disabled just because they are patching GeoSec in, into the, the kernel. I don't want to support that. I don't have time to just spend, well, hours just to do an audit. It's just, it's ephemeral, it's a cloud. Even if it's a bare metal, it's cloud parting. Just reinstall the machine, that's faster, right? We have Kickstar, it's, just, it's, it's there for a reason. So we just in reinstall from scratch and then, well, Puppet come to the rescue and configure what I want on the machine, so. But we just start always small. Because, yeah, we have companies supporting us for now 10 years, they're still there. Can we trust those people? Yes. Can you trust a random guy saying I want to give you a machine in my data center somewhere in a strange location? Probably, but you, you cannot, you, you can't know for sure. So what we do is that it's about trust relationship. You want to establish a trust on long term that is to be proven. So what we do is that we, we, we start with sometimes just the M-Sync role. Wow, that seems a little bit strange that I say, I start with non-crucial role well, at the same time, I say that those machines are mirror.center roles. It's true, but if we don't run anything sensitive on the machine. I mean, that's just CentOS mirror, and all packages are GPG signed, so even if they wanted to do something strange, from a, a client, a young client point of view, you would see the difference anyway, so. And uh, if the machine just disappears, it's just a matter of just removing from the DNS, the PDS backend, then nobody notice anyway that the machine just disappeared. So we start from, that's level. Another good thing is to do is um, we usually test the response time. Because, yeah, sometimes you would be surprised that they have a sophisticated uh, mechanism, but you ask them something, and because you are open source, obviously you are not a paying customer. I mean, I don't mind, I, I go, uh, it's a rule, but it took three or four weeks to uh, get an answer. On a machine that you need to rely on, no way. So even if you have nothing critical, even if you have no problem, just test uh, the support response time and, uh, and whatever. That's how we can, um, well, quantify the, the quality of the, um, of the support. And then from uh, with the time, we know that we can trust, uh, because we, we can trust them, and then put more crucial role. I, I, I mentioned the fact that, for example, we had to migrate um, the main ns1.centos.org um, record, the glue record on a machine. When we decided to move elsewhere, we need, of course, to not just, well, blend in a random way, say, like, well, let's take that one because I, I, like, I like location. No. Um, it was from a provider who showed that they were there, they were supporting us, and that's the, that's the location where we have two machines in the same data center. We can move the IP back and forth on the two machines. So, yes. We can use it. We have also other resource, uh, sometimes on the machine that we own, like we just recently announced for the people in the special interest group that we have um, a small dev cloud, we, we call it dev cloud. So we have four physical nodes uh, running in the DC in London uh, with quite a bunch of, um, me of memory and uh, CPU. And we are using just local SATA disk because well, that storage is always a big, uh, an issue. And we're just aggregating the local setup with Gluster and present the whole thing as a single storage solution for the physical node. So the physical node are at the same time, hypervisor, cloud, and uh, storage provider. So, but it's for testing purpose, so that doesn't mind. And we use Open Nebula as a simple solution for, for that. So what's the, the future within the CentOS infrastructure? We started a thread on the CentOS devil list. I don't know if you have read it, uh, if, read, if you have read it, but there is a way for centralized authentication more and more. When the team was just five of us, Puppet was clever enough just to deploy the SSH key where it was needed. There was no need, there was, a, yeah, there was not a need for central authentication, but we are just 
um, opening up the whole thing. Um, I don't know if you were there yesterday, but Thomas from CERN speak about, spoke about the uh, cbs.central.org, which, which is mainly a um, community-built system. We have a bunch of machines just being there in the Koji system. But Koji relies on, on sort of centralized authentication, and we needed to, to, to generate a bunch of X509 certificates. So we need a common tool to do that for us. We can't rely on Topet for that anymore. It will not scale. Um, another need is some self-service portal, meaning that people would be able to, I want to contribute to the, 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 the central's project. Let me just create an account, and then I will be given right on several things. 15 minutes, yeah, no problem. That will be finished. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so um, last but not least, um, faster updates on Mirror. We had, and I said we had you included. We had a says I mean we had a strange problem this week. I mean, ghost? Anyone? Leave C G C update? Okay, so people not aware of what I'm talking about can just go away anyway. Or not you are not really season means. So the interesting <laughs> problem there is that from a center's point of view, the update was built quickly. In less than 15 minutes, it was on all the mirror.centers.org nodes. But then, five, five hours after that, people were still complaining, the update is not, still not there. Why? The problem is that external mirror are supposed to sync from us, but we don't control those mirror. So we don't know when they want to update or not, right? So we have a problem in the sense that we are thinking about, I mean, if you have an, an, uh, an idea about that, I'm, I'm all open, I mean, for that. We were thinking about using something m more clever like a CDN or a message bus um, that external mirror can just, we just publish and people can just subscribe and take action or whatever, but we still don't know. We, we I started to spoke with Pierre with that because in mirror manager, they are just rewriting. Do you know Mirror Manager from Fedora? I guess yes. Question? Yeah? You said yes or you had a question or an advice? Okay, I said, I, s I, f I was thinking you had a solution. I said, yeah, you are the guy. So <laughs> we have to think thinking about that. So I would be interested in, I, I know that we have some people from OpenSUSE and Debian. So if how do you solve that problem at the moment? Yes. Which will sign up all the registered users and not sign which mirror is applicable to which one is not. And yeah. we always redirect the people anyway to the mirror which are applicable. So people don't contribute to the specific mirror, they're always contributing to the mirror of one. Yeah. Which is taking care of not sending people to which are of any not applicable to which mirror. Okay, so um suggestion is to use mirror brain. And yes, I just had a look at Mirror Brain, but it's basically exactly what we are doing at the moment and also what Mirror Manager does. So, I mean, with more than 580 mirrors to just verify in a crawler process, we've, we need to verify three um, distribution, two architecture for distribution and base, OS, update, extra, multiple repository in the same distribution. The, crawl pro the crawler process takes more than four hours to do that and to validate. So I was thinking about something like an emergency repository where we could just drop and by default just point people to that repository. That, that's one of the solutions we have. Because we control the mirror list, we can say, well, just just return mirror.centers.org and we are fine because we are sure that we are up to date. We control this machine, we monitor this machine. 
But when then you have millions of machines hitting the same 60 machines at the same time, well, it's a good reason to, s yeah. Yeah, so that's part of, that's one of the solutions. So it's a mix of let's try to validate um, up to date mirror and in the meantime just redirect to a specific repository or just the mirror that's all the old nodes. So yes, I mean we wanted to do a, a live test like just using for example um, putting all the updates to just mirror the centers at all. But basically then we had a bunch of phone calls or machines just disappearing from the mirror network because those companies said. You exceeded the quota that you were allocated this month. So that was even more probable than a real solution. That's also, we don't control, well, those donated machines is really some, it's a challenge. It's a good because this, the C in CentOS is community. So we still like and we, we, we rely on those community machines, on donated machines. But we need some something more robust some, from time to time. So, I mean, how the people from Debian are doing that? No, no solution probably. Okay. Okay. That would be interesting to continue the discussion on. I was thinking about, for example, using some kind of season mean cross distribution list on which we could share information because it's all about yeah, learning from each other because we are trying to solve the same problem that we all have at the moment. So that would be probably an interesting discussion to have all together. Why not? So um, yes, question because yeah, it's question time. If you have question or time, yeah. So the first one in the back, yeah. How do we keep the infrastructure that we have? Do you mean um, from an inventory point of view? At the moment, we have, a, well, we store a maximum of information if possible in Foreman. But on the other hand, we still have an inventory that we just share with sensitive information like for point of contact, email, telephone number if possible. So we do that on, well, in a Git encrypted uh, repository. Just so that it's, it's easy, everybody can have access from the system in team at least. So um, that's what we used to tracking. And we also track when a machine, for example, was donated, disappeared because sometimes you want to, to track if a company was acquired by another one. We had that funny story when uh, we discovered that because of acquisition, we had uh, two companies that were, that were merged into one and we had two machines in the same data, data center, but historically from different companies. So from that point of view, it was not, well, it, it was not a good idea to put uh, the same role on this machine because they were just struggled by the same network connectivity in a way. So we just try to do a mix and match of, we track all that into separate parts, but we don't have any specific tool to, that, uh, to do that at the moment. So other question, yes. Thank you. 
Yeah, I mean, virtual machine can be really interesting, and we use virtualization pos when possible. But when I say that, for example, what do you do when you say migrate? You may migrate in the same uh, well, on two physical machines in the same data center on the same rack, yeah. which we don't have. I mean, well, then what's what's the benefit of using virtual machine? I mean, you just need to. At the moment, everything is puppetized, so whatever it is of bare metal or a physical machine or a virtual machine, it's, it's uh, just exactly the same way of migra migrating, right? Except if you say that you are just using Virtu V2V or whatever to just put completely the machine over, I prefer just just puppet doing the reinstallation. The machine is sometimes faster. There are a few. Yes, we have Tinkis, but then for the specific machine, we have obviously backups. Um, but we don't have the, 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 the crucial role at, at the moment is more the, the mirror uh, content for outside. So, and um, we saw a big difference when we try, for example, to run that specific node in a virtual machine because of the kernel cache and the IO to disk because you want everything and more in cache if possible. Well, it didn't scale, so we decided to, to just use bare metal for those reasons. Anyway, it depends. Sometimes we receive a machine that with plenty of memory, and well, we have another mirror next to the one in the same data center or in the same country. We decide to use that one for specific smaller role, like the web server, for example, is one of the, those examples. And we have multiple virtual, virtual, virtual machines on the same physical host, yes, we use, but not that much. Just because, you know, you have one machine there, one machine there. It's not like, you know, the on-premise, um, uh, data center thing that you can have, like well, on-premise cloud. We we can't because it's geo dispersed everywhere around the world. That's one of the challenge we have uh, at the moment. Also, I would like to have everything into uh, one data center, another one for data data uh, data disaster recovery purposes, but it's not the case. Um, other question? Or I think I will. I'm out of time. No. Yes, I'm out of time. So, thanks.